What's that brush? Rubbish. Rubbish. All right. So my charts are up to date. Um, the monthly candle closes this month. <laughs> Honestly, honestly, I don't think it's bearish, this monthly candle. I really don't. Um, not at the moment. I think if it closes all the way down to here, it would still be fine. Just, I think any close of this month within this previous month is fine. I don't, I don't really think it'd be bearish if we close anywhere in this month previous candle it's just an inside it's just an inside monthly candle they're not bearish um they're not bearish it's just normal it's just the price is ranging the whole that this month the price has been ranging and it's gone from the top to the bottom effectively that's all that's happening in this monthly candle really it's not um it could become bearish if you had followed through um it's quite a different situation to these previous months and in any case it's, it's it's rare to have a topping candle with just one two months on its own there's always another month that follows I think it would have to close underneath the previous month low to, to, to be some kind of engulfing reversal back into the body. I think if it closed underneath this yellow line, then you then you'd really looking at a, a bearish close because you went up and you came right down and you closed below um the previous month low, and then you're basically closing into this expanding candle too. So that's quite bearish. That would be a bearish reversal if that happened. Um, but at the moment, it's still okay. It looks okay to me. It doesn't doesn't look bearish to me yet. Obviously, it's the bears are in control, but they have been for a while now. And that kind of makes me wonder, well, if they've been in control and they've only managed to pull the price down from the all-time high to the current price which is 14% to the low it went to about 20% I think that's pretty normal in a Bitcoin bull market to have a 20% correction could you go further than 20 so the, the question then is does next month when it opens wherever this closes does the next month go down first clear the lows and start rallying i mean i think that totally could happen if you have a if, you, if the way it's closing now you could get another push down next month for the first week one more push get a nice green get a nice red close down here and then the week after you start getting the buy up. Yeah. That would make that would be possible. People will be bearish and then they get squeezed. And then you have got these levels. Um this is this is really the level of interest. This, this one here. Five seven four four two. I think that's the most interesting level at the moment because it's the highest volume node that's closest to the price action and then underneath it you have the higher range value area high and you've got the previous bull market range value area high so you've got quite a large amount of volume levels here and you've got this bull market channel here so just one more fi one final shake out before we go up
shoulders. So, got single prints here still. Yes, same prints down here as well. Good morning, Ali Hash. Slurf. Yes, I like our look at Slurf. I find it very difficult uh, to imagine the price going underneath this high volume node and it's a higher it's the overall range it's high volume node and overall range it's quite a big one and then you've got some big uh, value areas underneath um we have this trend line this is uh this is the current trend line yeah so you'd have to basically hit that somewhere in the beginning of the, in the first week of May, you'll be here, race basically here. Yeah. So could we get another red week and another red week, like two more red weeks? Um, we're closing this week today. The next week will be another red week. Next week will be another red week. It will just look really miserable. But that actually, that would be the place to buy. Like in terms of the best place, that's going to really be a good place to buy. Bearish, but, be but basically what I'm saying is that what I'm thinking is, um, I'm thinking we lose the range. And um, right now, the range is from the top. So let me just call that. Um, oh, I'll just, I'm just going to mark it out the way I think it's, it could play out. That's the range high. Okay. This is the range low right so that's the range at the moment we're in some kind of we're coming back into a higher time frame um bull market channel midpoint yeah so you see from the previous bull market we have this channel and we have the midpoint and that's the lower part of the channel okay so if you follow that channel through, you can see that we came above the bottom. And what's interesting about the bottom here, if you look at it very carefully, is for a period of three days, we lost the bottom of the channel. It looked bearish, but actually it was a, a failed auction in the lows of this range, deviation from the range. The price snapped right back up after it hit this trend line here, which didn't exist, and, it, and now it exists. Okay. Uh, effectively, in this range here, you had a similar uh, concept on the highs and lows. Yeah, you had the range high, um, somewhere like that. You had the range low, somewhere like that. You had the failed auction of the highs, the range highs, and then you had the failed auction of the range lows before the rally began. Okay. Uh, the difference now in our current range is that we haven't taken the range high. We, we've only put in a one high on that single day. And then ever since we've been kind of moving to the downside. <clears throat> we failed to hold the uh, previous bull market all time high on three separate occasions on three separate occasions the price has failed to hold the previous bull market all-time high okay and now 
we've also come down into the lows and on three separate occasions we failed to go lower with massive liquidations at the lows okay we're seeing massive bullish cvd in this whole range but that still hasn't played out yet it takes time for that to play out and it hasn't played out because naturally you can still see that the selling is continuing people are still selling now we have some really strong levels here because we've got some really important higher time frame volume areas we've got this higher volume node which is on the overall range of this token on this chart it's there it's really close to us so if i was to go back and do a uh, volume pool on this overall range yeah you'll see that right at the top there there's quite a high volume node right there and that effectively is going to be our biggest support level as we descend in value it's here hvn that's why i've marked it higher volume node underneath it we've got the higher volume higher range value area high and underneath it we've got the previous bull market range value area high so within a short space of a few thousand dollars free we have two or three thousand dollars we have some quite um important levels that should hold the price it should hold the price if the price was to go down that far plus we have this trend line as well which has only been touched twice and so naturally you would expect the third touch to react you'd expect some kind of reaction in the third touch um to get to this the trend line you're basically looking at the first week of may sometime in the first week of may uh so that kind of could correspond with the monthly candle if it prints red which it probably will to go down first clear as much liquidity as possible take the monthly low with the view of going back up okay so what i would be thinking right now is um lose the range lose the range low somehow i don't know how it's going to happen but you basically lose it somehow lose it get everyone bearish because people are thinking to themselves now we're short we're going short we're going short and snap back in for the impulse to begin that's kind of what i'm thinking right now um failed auction of the low of this range exactly the same as what we had before here exactly the same come underneath this channel midpoint lose the range low but come into this really uh higher this really important higher time frame volume level um shorts are gonna pile in continue to pile in because you've lost the range low people are going to become suddenly bearish this whole structure is looking quite bearish at the moment you're making the uh, lower highs you know people are feeling bearish and that sentiment might continue more as we go lower so the lower we get the more bearish you're going to, people are going to become and actually the opportunity to buy will be right here okay that's kind of my thoughts right now for the the higher time frame bitcoin price action i don't know if that's going to destroy alts or not i have no idea it probably will but 
what's interesting about the aughts is that uh, ETH is pumping against Bitcoin. And so naturally, maybe the value is leaving Bitcoin to create this kind of idea to pull the, the price of Bitcoin down until Bitcoin hits the correct level where the value will come back in from ETH and then pump Bitcoin. That happens a lot. And you have this kind of um, massive manipulation in the market where large sums of ETH and Bitcoin are swapped just to create um, the right conditions for uh, people to either get liquidated or for bigger players to make a lot of money. Okay. This would look quite bullish, wouldn't it? If we if this if this create we did this. I think the signal to end would be to reclaim the range low. The trade, the best trade would be somewhere into this into this uh failed auction. Um it'd be very hard to do, but it'd probably be the most profitable trade because you wouldn't necessarily necessarily be thinking about going lower and maybe losing the HVN or and reclaiming it would be the easiest entry the reclaim of the HVN the high volume node but it may not even get there it might just you might just have a reaction you know you might just have a little reaction and then a swing failure of some sorts I don't know no one really can predict that um, get back into the range get back above that channel you'll probably pump all the way to the all-time high in one big blast probably it would just be quite explosive that's probably what I'm thinking is that could be the next corrective wave end of the corrective wave of um, I'm not really thinking lower to be honest with you I think it's very unlikely that we go underneath this high volume node. So it would be that. That's what I'm thinking. Um, right now. Up to 93, 4, 5,000, someone like that. Up to that top of that bull market channel. Maybe that green level, somewhere there. <laughs> Let me see how that corresponds with um, with these fibs. Let me see. So the 618, if we went down to this high volume node, which would probably be the right place, the 618 would bring us to about 86,000, right? So that really would be your target, about 86,000. Even though it could overextend and it'll be a lot easier to s calculate that when once we have the first two waves of, of this next impulse, if it is from this, this location here, we could probably you could probably overextend it just depends on how impulsive these waves are but i think technically if that was your correction that would be your target it would be about eighty six thousand dollars for the end of this wave for this last wave five um and then we're looking at a a, a pretty miserable summer of corrections okay so i don't know how long that will take that could just be one and a half months, <coughs> three weeks, six weeks or so, or less. And then we're basically correcting all the way to sometime in October. Okay. Now it could just come back here. We could just have a nice zigzag down here. Um, that was quite flat. That was like an extended flat. So I think when you, when the one to two is a flat, I think the three to four should be a zigzag. So they shouldn't be the same. You wouldn't get a flat and then a flat. You could, but you would expect some kind of zigzag. 
uh, and you we may we may this may actually come come down much further than people think it'll be it'll be a summer you know and so there won't be many kind of it'll be quite boring but it'll be quite choppy and possibly a zigzag right back down to, to clear the liquidity from this range pro probably who knows no one really knows how far this could what what can happen with the correction probably the whole summer it would correct and then you'll be looking for your wave five from probably November all the way through to who knows no one really knows that would be very conservative um something like that would be very conservative Uh, you'd have to lose this trend line. So I think that's how you would know. And then you basically you're trying to form another trend line, another new uh, trend line for the next five waves, which would be the wave five. So right now that's kind of where I'm at with the higher time frame. Yeah. Um, Yeah. Wait, wait for complete. And then um, I can hide these now. Uh, looking at the uh, the local price action, well, we we came back into the value area, and now we're trying to <laughs> now the price is trying to lose the value area. I just don't think there's enough interest. Like I, I took a speculative long as we reclaim the value area. Why not? It's no big deal. You know, you take a long, you see what happens. Uh, we are back into the value area. So I posted that on Twitter last night as we came back in. You could see that there was uh, actually the range was basically to there. So I was just looking at it from that point until we dropped out. Uh, you can see that we were back into the value area. Hold on. Actually, the value area that I'm looking at is the this value area. This one. So I, you can see that we got acceptance into this value area. This is the current range. So... You would take you would long that wouldn't you we haven't back tested it but i mean i long that speculatively why not and at the same time <laughs> i bought trvl this you know this could be it that if this if this is if if because even though i'm thinking slightly higher time frame that we do go down um you never know you, you just don't know you know even though i'm thinking down still just based on everything that i'm seeing it could also go up yeah and to go up you have to reclaim the value area low so obviously if you reclaim the value area you would long wouldn't you you would long and see what happens so what's actually happened is we've uh, if you if you extend this volume this volume profile of this lower range here this local range what's actually happened is the price has gone back into the point of control rejected and now it's falling back okay it's falling back to the value area low of this uh, local range and it's also a back test of the a uh, much 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 wider range but still this range here no actually this is the overall range my bad so that value area low red line that i've marked is the overall range of this current range okay there's two value area lows there's one that's printed on exo charts which is i've got it marked here and there's one that's on trading view that's marked here okay so at the moment um is the stream working can't tell all right the chat my chat has mashed up that's fine okay
to it. Oh, fair push. Okay, yeah, my chat's totally mashed. That's fine. I'll, I'll just use this pop out chat. So, um, this is actually a good sign to reclaim a level, is a good sign, you know, like, why not? If we can hold here, maybe we could, it could continue. And I'd like to see that. I'd like to see uh, it go up, of course. Um, and I would like to see the monthly candle close a little bit higher. Yeah, not too bearish to show a little bit of reaction from the lows. And I'd like to see this weekly candle that's about to print tonight to uh, close as high as possible. But I mean, just who knows? No one really knows what's going to happen. Right now, it's it's obviously the problem is that we're not getting that absorption that we were getting, and you kind of need that. So when I was looking at um, the order flow, I'm not seeing that absorption that we were seeing before. Okay, uh, and that kind of makes me wonder also now in this little drop seeing some shorts open as well okay so we're getting that too we're getting shorts open too so you're not getting the bullish order flow that you want to see and you're getting uh, some shorts opening too and obviously as the price has come up here you see lots some longs have opened they haven't closed yet. These longs haven't closed yet. You can see that on the OI, it's gone up, but it hasn't dropped out yet. So technically, these longs that have opened here, their position is at the moment is underwater. Okay. It's just something to bear in mind. Have they longed again? Yeah, potentially they've longed again here. Potentially here. Could it be, could be the same person longing in off daily open from the value area low? It's a good place to long. Yeah, that's kind of where you, if you want to be wrong, that's kind of where you want to be wrong when the price comes back into uh, a potential support flip, resistance flip to support. But obviously, if the price isn't strong and the buying doesn't really continue, then these longs are just going to close out. They're not going to hold on. Uh, you can see the, the OI is going up, the price. That's quite healthy. But if the price now starts to drop, then a lot of these longs are going to close and it's just going to pull the price right back down. Yeah. So you need continuation with these moves. You can't just, it can't just be temporary. Otherwise you end up with short centering and then you end up with longs closing and it just pulls the price right back down. Yeah. But it is the right place to be wrong here. So it's, it's absolutely the right place to be wrong because that's kind of where you would expect the price to find support for another attack of these uh, of the point of control. But to be honest with you, I wouldn't be surprised if we get an, on this move up, you're ending up with a lower high for continuation to the downside eventually. Eve effectively, that's what's happening. It's, it's a lot less bearish than it could be, yeah? Just quite simply because you know, you've taken out this low, you put in a lower, lower, low, and look, you're getting some nice buy ups. So the bearish momentum hasn't continued. And it's not as bearish as it could be, basically. And the other thing that kind of makes me think it's not as bearish as it as it could be is um, watching ETH BTC pump, you know, that's quite a, it wouldn't really do that if it was bearish. If it, if, if it was really bearish, ETH BTC would, ETH would be bleeding into BTC. Yeah. But the, quite the contrary, ETH is pumping, uh, BTC is pumping into ETH. That's not really a bearish idea. You know, if it was, if BTC was in danger, then ETH would be coming back to BTC, not the other way around. It kind of tells you a different story. 
and also Bitcoin dominance is bleeding um, this high. Uh, effectively, what we need for alt season is for BTC to get up to there. <laughs> Heading BTC D needs to get into resistance, and it's that's kind of what you want for alt season. Maybe that will happen with the next BTC rally, the next wave to the upside. I'm I'm expecting that, and that's going to be the peak of the 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 beginning of our all season maybe that will be the whole summer from that one that point onwards who knows so so i am in a long right now <laughs> it's a very speculative long but reclaiming the value area for me is a sign of strength and as long as we hold the value area i'm gonna be in a long you know because sure this could reject from the point of control if we make another attack but it could also push up and push up and push up. It could also do that. Yes. Yeah? So and just because I think it could reject, it doesn't mean it can't do the opposite. And actually this is the right place along. If I now start seeing the price lose the value area low, obviously I'm going to be out, take a loss. It's not a big deal. That's the trade. Yeah. Um, the idea was right, but it just it just wasn't maybe not, not enough continuation or strength to continue and that's fine you know uh one time you'll fail two three times four times you'll succeed yeah you just have to make sure that you don't um over risk that's all because then you'll just take too much loss and it'll be hard to recover from that when you do take losses okay so let's see what happens um unfortunately uh slurf is, is is bleeding again and so i've used slurf as a bit of a pre-warning for what's about to come and where did it go again oh, i've lost it oh because i did it alphabetically that's fine Uh, yeah, look, it just kind of, it's, again, it's fallen into weakness, slurf, unfortunately, and it's looking pretty miserable. So there's a, there's a, you know, doesn't mean it's going down to nothing, but, you know, if, if the market, if people were confident about Bitcoin, then slurf wouldn't be so limp and so weak, yeah? And so the fact that you're, you, there was a little bit of strength as um, I kind of had that idea already, but actually look, it's just falling right back into weakness, unfortunately. Um, maybe it will try and pick up, but I don't think so. Cause you just put in a, you've literally just put in a lower low here. You were making higher lows and higher highs. You just put in a lower low there. Uh, it's not looking great and it's a bit unfortunate but that kind of gives you an idea of what could happen again it's the same thing like with surf what do you do do you hold do you trade do you quit do you give up if bitcoin goes down to 57 58 000, i really don't see how surf will survive um i can't see it you yeah. But it's uh it's it's um it'll pro it's I think it'll probably head to Slurf will probably head and attack the lows again in line with Bitcoin. And it would just be a great opportunity for people to catch the lows one more time. Probably the golden pocket area is a good place to uh to pick up Slurf if it comes back on this back test. Is there confluence there? Possibly. You almost want, actually really what you want to do with this, what really what needs to happen with Slurf, um, is along with Bitcoin, lose the value area, get find support somewhere. And all you really have to do is just reclaim the value area, reclaim it. 
if that if that's timed well with Bitcoin bottoming in the area of interest, maybe in the first week of May, uh, then actually this could be a really good setup for a long. OK. Uh, and. And that actually on the daily time frame could be a higher low if you look at the way the you know you're making higher lower highs that's the higher high there you're making lower lows you know, that could be the higher low there and then the next change you'll be looking for is to take that out to make a higher high so you could be looking for a higher low set up somewhere around here to coincide with bitcoin um at somewhere about 29 30 cents uh, it may overcorrect and push further back down to 25 um but that's kind of like you'd have to you'd have to see how it per coincides with bitcoin and then um and then decide how you want to enter it may be the safest entry would be for it to to bottom out here and then find strength and to catch it as it comes up above 32 or 33 somewhere there because then you would be expecting along with bitcoin you're expecting some kind of uh, insane rally if you do make a higher low here and take out that high uh, then you're probably pushing right right up to one dollar or more maybe heading up to the all-time high so I don't think it's terrible right now it looks terrible <laughs> but I actually think that there could be a really nice setup for Slurf coinciding uh with Bitcoin time timed right with Bitcoin I think it's is I think just wait for Bitcoin to to figure itself out and correct and do whatever it's doing and it could be sometime in the first week of May the monthly candle prints you get another pullback for the first week or first few days and then obviously what i'll be looking for um is whether or not we get this something like that lose the range low failed auction the lows and come right back into the range come back into the range um that will be basically your opportunity to to buy as much as you can in whatever token you want yeah bitcoin first because bitcoin will probably be on the will probably will be pumping so a lot of altcoins will be bleeding into bitcoin value until bitcoin finally gets to where it wants to get to and then you can keep an eye on the bitcoin dominance chart so when you do when we do get into that that kind of that area of interest um that will probably be where you rotate into altcoins some altcoins will outperform bitcoin as bitcoin goes up probably slurf will be one of them yeah probably surf will go up with bitcoin and won't necessarily bleed into bitcoin so that's why i'm quite interested in slurf because it'll be nice to catch a, a high leveraged trade here and keep on adding 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 basically you'll be adding then because if you find that if you form a bottom on slurf here you take a leverage position and now it's starting to move up and you're expecting it to to rally with bitcoin up to 86k that will be your pico bottom for a swing trade all the way to bitcoin's end of final wave five basically you could just keep on adding the dips and keep on pulling your invalidation higher and higher and higher and you can really pump that trade uh, quite risky but potentially extremely profitable if if done if executed if you catch the bottom and you execute it correctly uh you could probably make a shitload of money just on slurf just by doing that um it'll make back for all of the losses <laughs> so that's why you keep on that's why we keep on going yeah you make some losses that's fine uh, but you keep on going because you can make it all back because you, you know you make two or three four bad trades whatever lose a little bit it's not a big deal 
then you do that one amazing trade and you do it right and you, you catch it right uh, and you can make a fortune and that just makes back for all the losses plus more you just have to be perseverant uh, and not give up and just be reset your emotional um and your emotions and your temperament and just keep on analyzing and looking at what could happen and where good places to enter is it all is about bitcoin now if the, the alternative to this would be for bitcoin to go up okay so you're kind of in a situation where bitcoin really has to go down or it has to go up and as i said yesterday it's looking bearish doesn't mean i'm not going to long okay it doesn't mean i'm not gonna you get a, you get into the value area low i'm gonna long of course i'm gonna long yeah i'm gonna long but i'm also gonna take profit um and i'm not just gonna hold out because i don't necessarily think the bottom is in when it comes to bitcoin yeah i might have said the bottom as it was in before and i i obviously i didn't i don't mean to mislead people it looks like a bottom here like a triple bottom push up um but then this following price action has been a lack of follow through on on behalf of the of the of the bulls coincide that with the lack of inflows from etfs coincide that with some bearish news about btc not being uh, permitted to be used as collateral from the etfs or crypto that can create the right conditions for a little bit of a panic drop which actually just gives you a much better entry yeah gives you a much better entry if we do manage to create this kind of behavior where we drop below the range low and come right back in you have the most amazing invalidation uh you could hire it'd be very easy to highly leverage that and then you'll get also an a mother of god short squeeze which is going to launch the initial impulse to the upside okay that's kind of what you need and that will follow with more squeezing and more squeezing and more squeeze effectively you're squeezing all of the shorts in this this whole upper range all the way to the top once you get to the top that's when everyone is going to start longing because people love to long the highs push it up another 10k and hopefully we'll be down here with really nice long positions and buying every dip and moving up our invalidation as the price continues to make higher lows as the price continues to go up that's kind of what i'm imagining right now and it this is just one idea there's probably a billion ideas out there um this is kind of what i'm thinking all right